Good morning, everybody. Um, yesterday, when I was facilitating a panel, I made a mistake. I misrepresented Yvonne's gender identity and expression, and Yvonne lovingly corrected me. Yvonne prefers to be identified as they uh, or their, and we talked about that yesterday, and I gave my apologies in private. But because I made the mistake in public, I wanted to use it as a teachable moment to apologize publicly for my error and also um, to use it as an opportunity for us to see that I make mistakes um, and I'm prepared to be corrected and I hope that all of us are in this space in that spirit. So Yvonne, I wanted to apologize publicly. Um, I asked Yvonne to come forward before I start the next panel and I hadn't prepared Yvonne, but I wanted Yvonne to perhaps assist us in explaining um, Yvonne's preference for using they and their so that we have a teachable moment. Are you comfortable with us moving forward that way? Okay, Yvonne, are you comfortable doing that? Thank you very much. So maybe you can help us. All right. Uh, thank you, Bella, for the surprise. Uh, <laughs> Pleasantly, uh, though, I identify as a gender non-conforming person, and uh, for that matter, pronouns are very important to me and for me, and immediately that happened, I was thrown off a bit, but thank goodness, like, uh, the camera is my base, so I, I picked myself up really quickly. Um, to be a gender non-conforming person in this context, finding affirming words and affirming... Uh, names for that matter, because even my, 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 co my uh, colonizer's first name is very gendered, and the moment somebody reads my name, they assume, they assume my gender, and for that reason, I, I acknowledge that people will make mistakes and errors, and it's a learning pro process for all of us. Um, I could privately explain why I am a gender non-conforming lesbian, but right now, let's go with gender non-conforming person, pronouns they, them, their. Thank you. Thank you, Yvonne. Um, I really love that, you know, this is what we do as feminists. When we make mistakes, we face them and we deal with them. So thank you for accommodating a public apology on my behalf. Um, I wanted to ask for support from Tanzania. Ukowapi, is there anyone from Tanzania here? Stigmata, thank you very much. And the reason I'm doing this is we're supposed to have Bertha on the panel, um, but there was a visa problem and there were travel problems as well. So we still wanted Tanzania on the panel. Please have a seat. Stigmata is with the African Grant Makers Network. Um, she's my sister and my comrade, and I wanted to use the space to give East Africa a voice on the panel, uh, because this is an African meeting, right? So when one African is unable to be there, we ask someone else to represent them as best as they can. I know you're not prepared, um, but thank you for stepping forward. The microphone is right here. Okay, so this session is session J in your programs. If you take a look with me, and it's entitled Transforming the Backlash into Breakthrough. We're going to do it very fast and dirty because, um, like yesterday, I need to make sure that we are in the transport by 3 o'clock in order to go to a different venue for the afternoon processes. So my panelists are briefed that we are going to ask them one question. What works to break the backlash? What is working to break the backlash? And I'm going to start with you. Yeah? If you could help us, Laurie, um, to speak about your own experience 
focusing on South Africa about what works to break the backlash. That would be very useful. And let's keep it very quick. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I'll just speak a little bit to the litigation option that we uh, took against uh, the church then and everything that surrounds it because there's a lot of energy around a court case um, which can be good energy and that one can use to educate and so on. So in this uh, build up to our 2016 General Assembly, which was really all about, it was entitled same-sex relationships. So that can also happen that uh, churches have General Assemblies just around this one issue. So we did succeed to some degree to center this issue, which I think is a good thing. Um, but we provided some a range of uh, legal opinions uh, to the church, and um, therefore uh, we got um, people to act on our behalf. We, of, of course, built a very great uh, top-notch um, legal team that was um, able to, to act pro bono on our behalf. Uh, which was definitely to our benefit and at the end of the day went the, the long way uh, towards court. But also the, um, um, in the build-up, I think there were some several local congregations that broke with the fold of the Dutch Reformed Church and said that they're actually standing with the old decision, with the inclusive decision, and not wanting to move forward uh, to the new one, that which was regressive. So there, and also just before the judgment was brought down in our case, there was an um, out gay minister called to the, to the church, to a congregation near Cape Town. So all the energy around it, the, the media work that we did also with uh, the support of the other foundation, Shekeshe especially, that helped a lot about uh, that. And also from student level, there was a hashtag campaign, hashtag why discriminate, that supported um, the work that we were doing um, in court. So obviously, um, that created a lot of energy and um, a lot of conversation, once again, education, opportunity to get the word out there. Um, so that's one example, I think. Thank you very much, Laurie. Um, so these are notes that we can take back to use anti-discrimination legislation uh, to force through the backlash and to push back on oppression and marginality. Um, in Malawi, from the Council of Churches, I wanted to ask you, Dongo, what has worked in Malawi? Thank you so much for, for, for your question. But uh, let me first of all say, I think you've heard much and a little about Malawi. There was that. Uh, presentation that is it David made and he talked briefly about what our situation in Malawi is but the most important thing that I can say that is working on the part of the church perhaps is that we have started to engage with the LGBTI community um, we do in dialogues but uh, at the same time we are also working within the council itself so that even the hierarchy, the usual hierarchy word that has been said over and over again, can actually get to be able to not only come to table, but not just to listen, but to hear exactly what the LGBTI is about. So we are working hard to first of all, get the church, the religious leaders themselves, to look at the person first before they can look at whatever next about the person. So with the council, we really, working on the one body, if you understand what I mean, being one body, being human being. We are not looking at people, at what you are. We are looking at, are you worth the sort that God also wanted us as human beings to be? So that is the first point that we're getting at. Superb. Thank you for sharing the Malawan example. If you could give the mic to Stigmata. 
um, focusing on your experience at the African Grant Makers Network. Perhaps you can speak about how when donors come together, that is a pathway to breaking through the backlash, particularly the backlash that um, funding from the West is driving homosexuality on the continent. Um, and maybe you can give us an example of how African funding is a solution. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for the, <laughs> the surprise that you have <laughs> gotten into me. Um, um, the, um, at, at the continental level, we have um, reached a point where we strongly believe um, that uh, the, the partnerships between the North and the South are the way to go. Uh, but again, um, the, at, at, at the center of it, there is a very strong you know, power uh, relations, which we really need to break. We really need to break. And for us to be able to break that power relation, there is a lot that is happening already in the continent. One is the information that, you know, we're here, the context matter. We, ha we know, you know, um, the issues and we own the issues. And uh, please accept that uh, what we are experiencing will be very different from what is experienced somewhere else. So, um, yes, um, we need this partnership in, you know, um, breaking through. Uh, but uh, the partnership should also speak into our should also speak into our context. But also, what we say is because there is a lot of power that is coming with this support that is coming from the north, we really need to also find ways to mobilize our own resources in the continent, because there is a lot of power with the resource, a lot of power with knowledge resource, a lot of power with asset resource, a lot of power with financial resources. So through the churches, churches are institutions with a lot of power, and that power comes through all the three areas I've mentioned. So what we see at the, um, from, from, from the continental level is that we have a lot of now awareness that has been created. We are coming out, we speak to, you know, to, the, to the truth and how we feel that the church is doing the discrimination that is done by the church. Uh, but on the other side, we see a lot of... Um, relationship between um, the, 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 the social injustices and equality and the mushrooming of different affiliations. And normally the churches which are well and institutionalized are just a few. The Christ, uh, Roman Catholic, you would say maybe Protestant, um, it could be uh, maybe the Anglican in other places. But coming from Tanzania I will also bring another aspect here which is very important to touch. It is the Muslims. We have 50% of Muslims. And th this is not only Tanzania, it's also in most of the countries in West Africa. Muslims represent almost 50% of the, 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 the population. And um, so the mosques are the ones who are also coming up very strongly with the support and recognition of the rights and the space and the, you know, space for the LGBTI. So we also need to look at, um, what we are saying is, let's look at the, 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 the church or look at the religious institution in all its aspects, in, all, in, in a holistic manner, so that we can now see that um, different um, constituency of the ecosystem which makes um, the, 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 the religious institution is being part and parcel of this conversation. And this is what we see, the part and parcel of conversation. But again, uh, you have the poverty, which is very much affiliated or associated with the struggles we are having. Um, and then you have a lot of, you asked me about funding from the North. Funding from the North is, yes, if we, were, if we are not able to stand for ourselves and you know, put our feet down, funding from the North will only you know, help us to alleviate the symptoms of our social, in social injustices and equalities. So we really need to be at the center of the conversation, at the center of the fighters, at the center of all the strategies which should, be, should work for us and not for the money or the person we are working with. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you can have a side conversation with Stigmata about the work of the African Grant Makers Network, um, which is a very powerful continental platform looking at philanthropy. Um, I want to turn now to Leila, and Leila has 
a really beautiful identity as a queer Muslim woman um, who's working predominantly with Christian churches in Ghana. Um, and it's tremendously inspiring to see the work that she's doing to cross bridges between two religions that tend to have hostilities against each other. Leila, can you tell us about what the work you do in One Love is doing um, out of Ghana? Hello, thank you, Ghana. Okay, in Ghana, I'll say in One Love, the first, we work through interfaith diversity network of West Africa, which works with all countries in Ghana, the church. So with that, we work, we do dialogue select where we invite progressive religious leaders and have discussions with them. And we make sure we involve some of the LGBTI members in those discussions to make sure that we tackle questions that, are, that we are battling with. And you know, most of these religious faith um, LGBTI persons battle with their faith and their sexuality. So we try to tackle questions around that. And I think that is working for us and the progressive religious leaders are helping us in this conversation. Thank you very much, Leila. Uh, during the breaks and in the networking opportunities, please speak to Leila about the lessons from Ghana about transgressing uh, religious confines and how that's working for them. So what we would like to do now is to thank our panelists for beginning the conversation. Um, we're going to move into our groups with our four facilitators, Lebu, Pierre, Vishnu, and Lucy. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. 